Hello and welcome to Pod Meets World. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin. And this week we're discussing the episode Danger Boy. Danger Boy. <laughs> Danger Boy. Yeah. Uh, Fine. This episode originally aired February 3rd, 1995, attracting 19.6 million viewers. That's mildly surprising. I figured people would have been more up to seeing that particular thing go on. Number one on TV for the week, ER. Because of course it is. Yeah. It's ER in 1995. Uh, Number one at the box office, Legends of the Fall. I don't know what it is, really. Yeah. Some period piece thingy. Uh, number one on the Billboard charts. Any guesses? Fan of guesses? last week? No, it's a different song. Then I have no idea. Well, I knew you would, and I figured there's a slim chance David might. I don't know. At the time, I was probably five. I didn't pay too much attention to that. Creep by TLC. Hmm, neat. It's fine. It's not the creep you're thinking of. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew the minute I said creep, you'd be like, oh, that song. No, it's not that song. Okay. It's the other one that nobody remembers. Hmm. It's fine, but meh. Uh, video games, uh, nothing really relevant. Sadness. Not for a couple of weeks. Anyway. WWF champion at the time? Diesel. Somebody put out the bloody fire! And the WCW champion at the time? Hulk. Hulk. Oh man, the TV shows and the how the boogans. Alrighty. So this episode starts with Eric on a date. She presents him with a proposition. Her cousin from New York is coming into town, and she asks if he, if she, uh, and she asks if he knows someone who can go with them so that it could be a double date. Eric suggests Corey would be a good choice, but he comes in and sprays water from his mouth, looking like a fountain, and she immediately declines. Because, you know, Corey moment in his own house and like not I, being warned. Like I told you, he's a fountain. Meanwhile, Corey <laughs> is no longer. Corey does a Corey thing. Anyway. I wouldn't think of that as a typical Corey thing, but okay. Uh, shortly after, Sean comes downstairs after presenting himself uh, as a bit more mature than Corey. She asks if Sean would go uh, with them. Eric insists that Corey should be the one, but after she kisses him, he is convinced that uh, he should take Sean. He asks Sean, lying about why Corey wasn't chosen to go on the double date. Meanwhile, at uh, John Adams High, Mr. Feeney and Mr. Turner and other teachers are gathered for a meeting to decide who would head up certain projects. Mr. Mr. Turner is chosen to head up the ski trip, and everyone assumes that Mr. Feeney prefers the chess club. Because, well, look at him. He's Feeney. Do you assume that with my particular appearance, I'd want to do the chess club? It's like, yeah, pretty much. Uh, he is offended and they is, uh, that they assume he would prefer a less dangerous activity because of the way he dresses and talks. And while they patronize him, uh, he does not quite get the respect he's looking for. He, he, yeah, yeah, they made the right call. He did, yeah. Anyway. Eric's choice of restaurants for a double date is not a wise one. It is, of course, Chubby's. I don't know. Corey's not going to be there or anything. No, nope. Corey never goes to Chubby's. Where Corey chooses to go as well. Oh shit. Chubby points out that Corey is alone, uh, to which he replies that Sean was out and that he is flying solo. Of course, Sean walks up right beside him, confused because Eric told him that Corey couldn't go. After returning to the table and confronting Eric, the two girls... Uh, return, finding the three of them there. Corey figures the entire thing out for himself and declines to do the fountain again, stating that he's just not feeling very funny that night. And the, the fountain thing isn't very funny. Betrayed. Uh, he leaves, followed by Eric. They get home, and Eric tells Corey that he simply wasn't dangerous enough for the double date. Because he has a severe case of being Corey. I don't think that would specifically be a case of things, but go on. Feeney is particularly perturbed as well, something that both he and Corey discuss in class. He's a little less than thrilled at the idea of going out and doing something stupid and dangerous. We until need to he is do once something again stupid. Patronized uh. by Mr. Turner. 
Uh, at which point he agrees to Corey's plan to go out and ride the most dangerous roller coaster in town. I don't know so, why Feeney agreed to this. So Because it's amazing. Well, firstly, can we just say that a particular idea that Corey decided to have is something that Feeney was good to go along with? Is that a first little point on the board for this? Uh, Eric and Mr. Stern arrive before the car takes off, but both are insist on riding it, with Mr. Feeney telling the operator to light that candle. <laughs> Just so you know, what they're riding is a crazy-sounding roller coaster where they need and to they find waivers. And they have to sign an indemnity for. <laughs> as, well, <laughs> as well as organ doning. <laughs> I love Feeney's reaction. Yeah, yeah, help yourself. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, the ride is horrifying to them both, <laughs> and they come back having switched places on the car. Somehow... <laughs> No, Feeney was out in front running at one point, apparently. <laughs> Why didn't we see that? It probably would have just completely destroyed the budget. You could have done it on a soundstage pretty cheaply. With some, like, green screen and shit. Would it have been convincing enough, though, just from... It doesn't have story, to be though. convincing. Really? It has to be funny. Really, though? Yes. Is it not funny enough just hearing the story of it? Letting your imagination draw the picture? That. They had to build this cart and stuff. That wouldn't have been cheap. No, but... I think they, they're they a pretty well-viewed show on a major network. I'm pretty sure they could have scrounged the money. And, of course, there was probably a time constraint. Well, yeah. that would be more likely than a money issue. Yeah. Uh, they get out, and both uh, Eric and Jonathan are impressed by their show of bravery. Slash stupidity. They get their revenge by shoving them both in the car and sending them both on the ride. High fives! Once again, I want to see this. Because <laughs> it's good. Anyway, uh, what did you all think of this episode? Uh, it turned out fairly good. There was the traditional betrayal of the brother going through the thing, but gosh darn that bloody woman sending him through that situation. But then of course it's Eric, so it's not really surprising. Yeah, Eric is not the most resistant to manipulation. Mm. Noticed. And just remember, on the scale of danger value, love a jello. Live jello. Would you... I don't know, like, if you're ranking... First off, don't eat jello, it's disgusting. But lime, lemon, is there really a difference? I think just a flavor. Yeah. There might be the acidity with the particular ones, but they're I'd both say they're acidic. fairly close. Yeah, but they do have a different... Well, I understand there's a difference between lemons and limes, Justin. That wasn't my point. But then, of course, there's also the case. Who has the particular saying in most cases, and what's usually squeezed in people's eye for a defense mechanism? Um, lemons? Usually. N no, I would say pepper spray. <laughs> That's, That's what I not to. part of the discussion, Paul! Stop playing... Stop that's like playing. saying play rock, paper, scissors, and then you pull out a gun. <laughs> well, yeah, that's how you win. What the fuck? Rock, paper, bazooka. Stop playing the tuba when you're supposed to play the piano. No. I don't play any instruments. Instruments are, well. But I think aside from that, it's also the case of just having that moment with Corey and Feeney with just having those particular moments there. Oh, no, Feeney and Corey being bros is great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially Feeney being all like, light that candle! <laughs> it's so good. Alrighty, do either of you have anything else to add? I think it's also good that Sean had a bit of that apology moment as well. It's like, so I just need to say, gosh darn it, I just had it. <laughs> it's so good. He's like, wait, wait, I'll get it. It's like, yeah, but, I mean, Sean didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. It's all yeah, no, yeah, everything was Eric's fault. Yes. Alrighty, so next week we'll be discussing the episode on the air. Ooh. <laughs> John Adams High is getting their radio station back, and Corey and Sean are going to get a show. Hmm. And then they're going to get kicked off. And then they're going to start a pirate radio station. That sounds utterly ridiculous. Yar har. Yar har har. We're hitting the high seas, me mateys. Oh, wait a minute. The ridiculous within this episode. There was an Elvis! Oh, yeah. Elvis shows up a few times on this episode. Also, the issue with their money, like, 
sure, their typical family with the house that they have and blowing about a decent hundred dollars or three hundred dollars on a haircut and poker playing. It was 130 for the haircut and 300 that he lost at poker. How do you then, lose 300 at poker in a night with your friends? Like, I get it at a casino. Mm, he was playing high stakes. Well, they were also making, they were also teasing and making chicken they noises. They were making chicken noises. Well, fair enough. I could get Justin out of like a grand make, making chicken noises. Eh, no, I wouldn't think so. Mm, mm, I do. Anyway, until next time, I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin.